Hi, my name is Nicholas Green, and today I'll be presenting our recent work, Multiview Stereo Net, fast multiview stereo depth estimation using incremental viewpoint compensated feature extraction. This work was conducted at the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory at MIT under Nicholas Roy. Multiview stereo, or MVS, is a fundamental problem in computer vision where the geometry of a scene is estimated from a set of images taken from known but unconstrained views. Plane sweep is a classical technique for MVS that finds dense correspondences by reasoning over planes at different depths. Rather than finding correspondences for all pi individual pixels independently, plane sweep uses techniques from multi-view geometry to find the associations for all pixels in the reference image. First, a depth search range in a reference image is defined, and a set of depths in this range are sampled. When all the pixels in the reference image are considered, each depth sample induces a plane in 3D space. A set of all planes across all the depth samples defines a 3D volume in the reference frame. Plane sweep will fill in this volume with a matching cost for every pixel and every depth hypothesis before extracting a depth map that minimizes the costs. Matching costs are generated by projecting the comparison image onto the plane at depth D and computing the difference with the reference image. After computing the matching costs for every depth slice, we end up with a 3D cost volume in the reference frame. Typically, additional filtering is applied to this volume to reduce noise and aggregate cost information. Then the depth that minimizes the cost for each pixel is computed, which yields a dense depth map in the reference frame. Each component of the plane sweep pipeline can be replaced with learning-based equivalents. Learned features can be used instead of raw pixel intensities, the cost volume filter weights can be replaced with learned kernels, and the minimization over depth hypotheses in the cost volume can be replaced by a differential soft argument operation which allows for the entire pipeline to be trained end-to-end. -end. Replacing these classical components with equivalents learned from data allows for robustness to things like lighting changes, missing or low texture, and other confounding factors found in natural scenes. There have been lots of impressive results in the learned MVS literature in the last few years, including DPSNet, MVSNet, and DeepMVS. However, these systems do not exploit all the information available to improve depth estimation performance, and are very slow and computationally expensive. In particular, the feature extraction subnetworks in these learned MVS approaches do not compensate for the known viewpoint changes when computing features and establishing pixel correspondences. By that, I mean that in the forward pass of the network, features are first extracted from each image independently and then projected onto the planes in the reference frame. Applying the projection after extraction means that the feature network does not consider the relative geometry of the cameras which is bad because objects can appear dramatically different when observed from different viewpoints. Consider this pixel association here. It might take a second for you to convince yourself that these two pixels belong to the same 3D point, given how different the images look. Focusing on the local region around these pixels emphasizes how different the raw color values are. This association task becomes even harder if the cameras are rotated relative to each other. Here's the same pixel association as before. The local patches are now even more different. By not considering the relative geometry between the cameras, the extracted features must implicitly compensate for all possible arrangements of the cameras. The features for the first patch of pixels must be the same as for the second patch, which must be the same as the last patch. There are several types of warps that can affect images in an MVS setting. The simplest is rotation, where the second camera is rotated along its optical axis relative to the reference camera. There's also scale transformations, where the second camera is translated along the optical axis of the first camera. Finally, there are general perspective transforms that occur when the second camera is yawed or pitched relative to the first camera. Again, projecting the features after extraction means that the feature network must implicitly compensate for all the scale, rotation, and perspective changes. Learning this kind of invariance requires complex networks and lots of training data, usually coupled with some form of artificial data augmentation and all of this increases the likelihood that the network will overfit and fail to generalize. A simple example of this problem can be shown by applying a role operation between the training and testing sets of a learned MVS system. Given a learned MVS network that performs well on a given training and testing split, all that it usually takes to break the system and incur a massive drop in performance is to roll the right images in the test set by 180 degrees. So we train the network with the images on the left, but test the network with images on the right. Most learned MVS networks will not handle the simple transformation of the input gracefully. Here we show an example depth map produced by DPSNet, a state-of-the-art learned MVS network from Imidol, trained on normal images. The depths produced when tested with normal images look good when compared to ground truth. 
However, rotating one of the test images by 180 degrees yields a steep drop in depth map quality. Remember, the network is given the same information in both instances, but is not able to compensate for the simple modification of the input. Our key idea for this problem is that we actually know the arrangement of the cameras and therefore can compensate for these known viewpoint changes directly in the feature extraction layers, generating features that are projected onto the set of planes by construction. However, doing this compensation naively can be computationally expensive. One option is to first project the comparison image onto the planes and then extract features from each projected image using conventional 2D convolutions. So we take the comparison image, apply the set of homogeneities that project the image onto the plane set, then take each image and pass it through a conventional feature network, and then aggregate all the resulting features. While straightforward, this approach requires executing the feature network multiple times, which can become unmanageable as the number of planes grows. Another option is to concatenate the projected images into a volume, and then extract features from this volume directly using 3D convolutions. So we take all of our projected images, concatenate them into a volume, and then apply one or more 3D convolutions to extract features. This is a fairly flexible approach, but we'd like to avoid 3D convolutions because they're much more expensive than their 2D counterparts. Instead, we'll overcome these limitations in two key ways. First, we'll utilize relative homographies to incrementally compute the projected features using only a single invocation of the feature network. The way this works is that we take our image and project it onto a plane corresponding to the maximum depth sample. We then feed the projected image through our 2D convolution-based feature network to generate an initial feature map. We then take that feature map, which we'll call FD here, and use it to compute the features for the plane corresponding to the next depth sample, F of D minus one. The way we compute FD minus one from FD is using the relative homography between the planes. Let's first look at the homography corresponding to depth D. This transform converts pixels in the reference image domain to the other camera's domain, assuming the 3D points in space lie on a plane at depth D. Now let's look at the homography for depth D minus one. It again transforms pixels coordinates between the two frames, but now assumes that plane at the plane lies at depth D minus one. What we'd like to do is compute the homography that instead connects these two planes. We'll call this transform delta H and refer to it as a relative homography. Now, given H of D and H of D minus one, we can compute delta H simply as H of D inverse times H of D minus one. Now that we have this relative homography, we can build F D minus one by applying delta H to the pixel domain of F D and by linearly sampling. So now that we have delta H, we can compute FD minus one from FD, and FD minus two from FD minus one, and so on. Until we've computed feature maps for all the planes and depth samples. These projected features correctly compensate for the viewpoint change between the cameras, but we only had to apply the bulk of the convolutional layers that extract features from the image data once. The second way we'll overcome the limitations imposed by viewpoint compensation is by following StereoNet from Comus et al., where we'll only compute low resolution features and matching costs, but then upsample and refine the outputs to full resolution. As Comus et al. outlined in their paper, most of the performance gain for learned MVS systems occurs by matching low resolution features. However, most of the runtime is actually spent on matching high resolution features. Reducing the feature map and cost volume resolution in this way can significantly speed up execution of the network. The output of the coarse cost volume, though, will be a corresponding coarse depth map, which may lack high frequency information. Upsampling and refining the depth map using the input image as guidance can reintroduce these fine details, however, and do it much more efficiently than explicitly performing high resolution feature matching. StereoNet introduced this paradigm for the rectified stereo case, but we now apply it to the multi view setting. The combination of these two techniques allows our approach to compensate for the known viewpoint changes, which reduces the need for scale and rotation invariant features, while achieving competitive reconstruction performance at a fraction of the computational cost. We call our full method multi-view stereo net, and I'll we'll briefly go over the full pipeline. In full pipeline, we extract features from the reference image using 2D convolutions and then tile the feature map to create a feature volume. Features for the comparison images are extracted using the proposed viewpoint compensated incremental feature extractor. The difference between these two feature volumes yields a low resolution cost volume, 
After filtering the volume, we use the differentiable soft R min operator to extract the min cost depth map. This final depth map will be low resolution, however, so we apply a series of upsampling and guided refinement layers to produce the final refined depth map at the full resolution. The training loss for the network is generated by comparing the series of refined depth maps to the ground truth depth labels. The picture above is slightly simplified. In reality, we apply a series of four upsampling and refinement layers, each of which produces a depth map. The training loss is then computed by taking each depth map, upsampling to the full resolution, and taking the difference with the ground truth. These individual losses for each image scale are then summed to generate the final loss, which we optimize using stochastic gradient descent. We employed our method in PyTorch and validated it against several state-of-the-art algorithms. Our first comparison used the Demon dataset, which is a common benchmark for MVS. It's composed of VGA images from four sub-datasets shown here. There are 51,000 scenes in the dataset, which translates into around 170,000 training images and around 700 test images. Ground truth is provided either through simulation or from RGBD sensors. Here we show qualitative depth estimation performance on the dataset compared to DPSNet. Across the benchmark, we achieve comparable depth accuracy to DPSNet, however, we're nearly an order of magnitude faster. DPSNet processes each VGA image in around 650 milliseconds, while our method takes only 65 milliseconds. We also show impressive performance on the GTA SFM dataset when compared to DPSNet. The GTA SFM dataset is a simulated benchmark from the GTA 5 video game with a wide variety of realistic large-scale environments and camera trajectories. There are roughly 17,000 training images and 1,500 test images. Here we show some example depth maps from the dataset where we perform well compared to DPSNet. DPSNet achieves an absolute relative depth error of 10% on the test set while we achieve an error of about 8.4%, again while being order of magnitude faster. And here are some more qualitative results from the dataset. We also show the benefit of viewpoint compensation. We previously showed how a conventional network like DPSNet suffers a steep drop in depth map quality by rotating images in the test set. Here we can see how DPSNet struggles with the rotated images. Our method, however, exhibits no drop in quality after rotating the images due to the viewpoint compensation in our feature network. Quantitatively, we show no change in absolute relative depth error, or RMSE depth errors, across the test set of the GTA SFM dataset when rotating images. We perform better than DPSNet under both scenarios, as well as a base network, shown in green, that is identical to our network, but with a standard feature extractor that lacks viewpoint compensation. To summarize our contributions, we proposed a learning-based method for multi-view stereo that achieves competitive depth estimation performance while being significantly faster than the state of the art. This is accomplished with a novel feature extraction strategy that incrementally computes viewpoint compensated feature maps and extension of low resolution techniques from Commons et al. to the multi-view setting. We plan to release our source code publicly for the benefit of the robotics community. Please check the link shown above for further updates. Thank you for listening.